CISD Reporting Services is in Paris for the UN Climate Change Talks, covering selected side events. On Tuesday, the 1st of December, delegates considered the importance of social science research for understanding climate change-induced migration in an event organized by the universities of Lund, Hamburg and Lancaster. Angela Utz explained why the event was organized. Um, that we want to show there's no simple link between climate change and migration. In fact, there's so many intervening factors. Secondly, we want to show that there are many different discourses of climate migration and that actually all of them are problematic for different reasons. Various views were presented on the dimensionality and inherent complexities of climate change and migration. So the presumption is that under conditions of climate change, people will move. That's a widespread assumption. And a lot of the research that's gone on in the last 10 years has concluded that that isn't necessarily the case. Climate change and migration as an area of research or as a phenomenon touches on all manner of concepts from political sovereignty to citizenship to adaptation even to questions about religion, spiritualism, um, political, ethnic, and racial violence. You know, it's a very multifaceted phenomenon. And the sciences, the physical sciences, are not properly equipped to address those questions. The social sciences are. And so that's the point that I want to make, that we bring you know, a range of methods, forms of research that can help us really interrogate the multi-dimensional nature of the phenomenon of climate change and migration. There have been three different ways of problematizing the relationship between climate change and migration, but actually that each of them is problematic for different reasons. So first of all, we have this discourse that asks us to fear climate refugees, to fear that we are flooded by millions of them. And we think this is quite xenophobic and also too simplistic. Uh, secondly, we have a discourse that asks us to save climate refugees by offer them, uh, offering them refugee status. Um, again, this goes over the heads of the people because most affected populations are not interested in climate refugee status. And thirdly, there's the most recent discourse um, that argues that migration has always been one of the ways in which people have adapted to a changing climate. We think what is problematic about this discourse is that it naturalizes the losses of livelihoods that people suffer. We know that people move for two reasons in related to weather and climate stressors. They move for safety and often they move quickly if a flood or a storm or some very rapid onset event affects them. They grab what they can, they take their children and they move for safety. They also move because of their livelihoods. If, if we think about the bodies of the people drowning in the sea or the bodies of the people shot while trying to jump over fences, many of those bodies carry on their skin even the signs of climate change. When climate changes, why don't some people migrate? I think we need more of a sort of an XY analysis where we say, let's look at where climate has changed or where there's been climate extremes and look at who migrates and why and who doesn't. And similarly, look at places where people migrate and it has nothing to do with climate. Well, what I think is we should not only do empirical research about the link between climate and conflict, but also empirical research about the link between climate and cooperation. Uh, humans are very good in trying to address problems and find solutions to them. And uh, These solutions could include uh, innovations, technical innovations, as well as social innovations. So anything that changes society and transforms society towards a low-carbon society that um, avoids the emissions before the, before the climate problems become really so bad that the cooperative pathway is under undermined. With all eyes on Paris, several participants reflected on the agreement and the outlook for climate change induced migration. In terms of migration, planned relocation, um, displacement, other forms of human mobility, we want those issues to be anchored as words and phrases in the legally binding part of the Paris Agreement. So we want to see medium-term action that gets to the ground, that helps people who are struggling to live where they are. We cannot expect too much because probably at this stage migration is too controversial to be accommodated within the very uh, difficult set of equilibria that are necessary to reach a treaty. 
I think what came out clearly today is that we